In this tutorial, we're going to create a spoon using SolidWorks XShape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. There is no start file for this tutorial. We can begin by clicking New Component and naming this Spoon. Instead of a sub-D body, let's insert a primitive surface. We'll use a rectangle. We can click to drop this on the XY plane, but notice this doesn't center the surface relative to the other planes. We can adjust the number of segments to end up with a 1x6 array of faces. Let's select the checkbox to scale by bounding box and we'll enable the option to scale non-uniform. We can then set the X value to 140 millimeters and the Y value to 8. To center this surface relative to the ZX plane, we can click the plane and choose the Center On option from the Context Toolbar. Without moving our cursor, the Context Toolbar reappears so we can enable the Symmetry option on the same plane. Let's go to the top view and we'll focus on the lower portion where we can form the bowl of the spoon. We can select the lower vertical edge and translate it freely by clicking and dragging on the arrows of the robot manipulator. If we move our cursor over the ruler or the numbers, we'll move in increments. Let's set this to 10 millimeters. While still selected, we can rotate this edge by clicking the arc on the robot and then clicking and dragging to rotate clockwise by precisely 25 degrees. If we click this face and hold the control key, we can click other faces to add them to our selection. From the context toolbar, we can select the subdivide command. Next, we'll box select the lowest two vertices along the center and translate them down by five millimeters. We can box select the middle row of vertices and translate them up by 5. Let's now select the two central faces using the control key and translate them down by 2.5. and then rotate inward by 15 degrees. Let's select this single edge along the center of our spoon and translate it down by 2.5 millimeters and rotate it clockwise by 10 degrees. Going back to the top view, Let's box select these three loops of vertices and click and drag the scale point at the end of the arrow to scale this down. We'll repeat this on the loop closest to the bowl of the spoon to achieve a more dramatic curve. Let's now switch to a side view and box select all of the vertices of the handle. We can translate them up by four millimeters or so and then rotate clockwise by 5 degrees. We can select this central edge and hold the shift key while selecting the closer side of this edge to select any edges in between. Now let's translate this up by 1.5 millimeters to add some curvature to the handle. Let's insert one more loop perpendicular to this edge by clicking it and choosing the Insert Loop command from the Context Toolbar. We can then box select the vertices of our new loop to scale them down, and then translate them towards the bowl by about 6 millimeters. If we show the bounding box from the top menu, we can click on the values to launch the Scale by Bounding Box command. 
we can enable the Scale Non-Uniform option and set the X value to 140 mm, the Y value to 30, and the Z value to 12. Now we're about done with the Sub-D portion of the design, so we can exit the subdivision environment. If we navigate to the Features tab of the action bar, we can launch the Thicken command. Using the Body Selection option allows us to apply a thickness of 1 mm to the entire spoon surface. Let's soften all edges with a small fillet which we can launch from the S key shortcut menu. We'll use a 0.1 mm radius and we can zoom in to the top of the handle to apply the fillet to all side faces. Using the Tangent Propagation option speeds up our selection. Our spoon looks good, but if we need to adjust the original Sub-D surface, we can go back to the Sub-D environment. We may want to add a more defined brim to the bowl of the spoon, so if we select this point, we can right-click to reorient the robot to XYZ, and then we can click and drag the wedge between the arrows pointing in the Y and Z directions to move freely in those two directions only. To best show off the model, we can go to the View tab and adjust the View Mode settings. In this video, we showed only sharp edges, the model was displayed as machined aluminum, and the ambience was set to be the studio. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own, and if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.